Hey everyone, and today we're not going to talk about Linux. I don't usually cover Windows on this channel, but this is a big event. This is the end of life of Windows 10. And distros and operating systems going end of life is absolutely normal. It's part of the life cycle of a computer and the software it runs. But the way this transition is handled and the options people running Windows 10 have are all absolutely terrible. So I just wanted to talk about it very quickly to cover why it's such a problem. And I'm not going to try and convince you to run Linux instead, although I'll mention it at the end. I just wanted to explain why what Microsoft is doing currently is such a nightmare. This video will be extremely simple. There is no sponsor. I'll just use this time to mention that I do have a members only section. Uh, I see some comments saying that the channel has gone members only. It hasn't. You just have daily Linux news videos. If you don't want to wait for the weekly recap, you can get them daily by becoming a member. But that's it. Now let's talk about Windows 10 and its end of life. So first, Windows 10 is not abandoned by users. It is still 40% of the entire Windows market share, if you can believe StatCounter, which counts visits on a whole lot of websites and makes uh, market share data out of that. They're generally relatively accurate. They're not a pinpoint number, but they're a solid evolution. And you can clearly see that Windows 10 is an enormous part of the Windows users right now. Windows 7, for some reason, is still at 10%, and Windows 11 is not even 50. So if you add up Windows 10 and Windows 7, you still have more users than users of Windows 11. Removing Windows 10 is a major thing because it's still about half of Microsoft's market share. Now, like I said, the issue is not that they're dropping Windows 10. It is normal for an operating system to go end of life. Windows 10 has been there for at least a decade, I think. It is absolutely normal to remove it. The problem is the options that Microsoft is giving their users are all absolutely bad. Now, first, there is a way to keep using Windows 10 for people who actually want to do that. You have to give that to Microsoft. But again, the way they implemented this is bad. So there's something called the ESU program, Extended Support Updates. This is basically continued support for Windows 10. It will give you one year of full security updates for Windows 10, although you won't get new features and what, whatever, because obviously this is just for security. This is free for home users, but to have it for free, you either need to use a thousand Microsoft points, which I don't know how you would get if you're just a Windows user, maybe by filling up surveys and stuff like that. So basically giving out your data. If you're an Xbox user, you probably have plenty of Microsoft points because you bought games. I think those still translate into Microsoft points. If you don't have those points, you can pay 30 bucks plus tax to get that one year of extended support, which seems fair as a service. And you can also get it for free if you accept to sync your PC settings to the cloud through your Microsoft account. You will need a Microsoft account to get those extended security updates. A local user account will not work. You need to create or log into a Microsoft account, which means you're basically exchanging one year of security updates for your privacy, whether it's by filling surveys or buying games on the Windows Store or just paying them or just sending some information through uh, syncing your settings, you're either paying with money or you're paying with your data. This is not exactly free. And if you're a company or using the Windows 10 computer commercially, you can get up to three years of extended support, but it will cost you about 60 bucks per year per device for the first year. The second year is gonna be double that per year per device. And the year after that, it's gonna be double that again. So at the end, you're gonna pay a lot for that. They really want you to move to Windows 11. Now, this program, is fine. You're getting extended updates and you're actually being told about it in the Windows update window. If you search for updates, you'll get a link to enroll in the extended security updates program. In that case, why hasn't this been given automatically? Why do people need to enroll if they're home users? If you're a company, sure, just make them jump through hoops because, okay, fine. If you're a home user, why isn't this applied automatically? You are developing those updates. You are going to ship them to certain computers and it's not going to cost you more to ship them to those users if you have five users or 100 million. Like you do have to have sizable servers 
but you still do have to have those servers available for the generic Windows 10 updates that people might still want to re-download for the drivers and the like. It's not going to change a thing for Microsoft. So why is this a program you need to enroll in instead of being automatically applied and just the final date for the end of life of Windows 10 being pushed after that year? They could have just said, hey, Windows 10 is end of life in terms of features right now in October 2025 and in October 2026 it will no longer receive security updates. All Windows 10 users would have still gotten the security updates for a year. The only reason they didn't do it this way is because they want to push people to Windows 11 because that OS is not growing. They want people to buy new PCs or to install Windows 11 on their current PCs if they can. This is a disingenuous commercial practice that I think really sucks. And on top of that, it only pushes the date by one year for home users. In 2026, you have the exact same problem as right now. What do you do? And you have two options, provided at least that you want to keep using Windows. Either your Windows 10 PC is able to upgrade to Windows 11 or it's not. If your PC is eligible to upgrade, you actually have a way to upgrade it straight from Windows 10 settings. Uh, well, from their update manager, you have a big banner telling you you should upgrade right now. And it's actually still free as far as I can tell. The issue is Windows 11 is undesirable as an operating system. It's really bad. It comes with telemetry that you cannot fully disable unless you actually access reg edit and suppress and delete a bunch of services and stuff from the operating system. This is, let's be honest, something that most Windows 10 users will never do and will not even know that they can do. So those Windows 11 PCs will just send a bunch of telemetry and personal data to Microsoft. Second, you need a Microsoft account to use it. Again, you can still potentially bypass that if you know how to do so, but again, most people will just never even know that this is an option and they will create a Microsoft account, which automatically enables a bunch of syncing stuff to Microsoft, thus sending even more personal data to Microsoft. Third, Windows 11 is riddled with ads. Ads for Microsoft products like Microsoft Office, OneDrive, or your Microsoft account, and various other apps. But also ads for other applications that will appear in the start menu as recommendations. This is not good for an operating system. And fourth, this OS is notoriously broken. Every single update always comes with a blue screen of death for a bunch of users, data loss, broken drivers, broken games, broken software. It's not just me saying it, just look online. Every single update for Windows 11 has come with some major OS breaking problems. This is a bad operating system. So even if your computer is able to upgrade to Windows 11, which it might not be, we'll talk about that in a second, you're getting a bad operating system. It is basically spyware in a neat little translucent interface. It is a terrible operating system, and that's objective fact. It's not just my opinion. Now, the second option is your PC is not eligible to run Windows 11. You don't have the TPM2 chip, your GPU isn't powerful enough, you don't have enough storage or enough RAM or whatever else, and you don't have the capacity to upgrade any of that. Let's imagine that's the case. You cannot run Windows 11 on that PC. Now, of course, you can run it if you build and install a USB drive and you run those little regulated tweaks that remove all those checks and verifications. But from the upgrade assistant, it will not work because it's going to run a compatibility check. It's going to tell you, you don't have the TPM2 chip. Your GPU is not powerful enough. You can't upgrade. That's where most users will say, okay, fine, my PC's trash then. Because most PC users just will not know that they can build a separate install media, then open a terminal, then type reg edit at the install uh, step, and then manipulate a few things, create a few entries. Most people will think that is highly technical, very complicated. It's not. But for a lot of PC users, it is if they even know that this is a thing they could do, which most people will not even think about researching. So they're just not going to have Windows 11. In that case, what do you do? You keep using Windows 10, which is now insecure because the extended support uh, period is now done. You're not getting security updates. And that's terrible for you as a Windows 10 user, because obviously you're gonna get infected. That's 40% now, but maybe at that point 30 or 30 or maybe even 25% of the Windows market share. Easy pickings that will not get updated. 
hackers will target those PCs. That's millions and millions of computers that will sit unprotected. So you will get infected if you go online with a Windows 10 PC in a year or more. This will happen. At that point, you're also going to infect other people. Every file you send to other people, every email you send, you're going to be a basically a spam bot without your knowledge. It's just not good for the entire internet to have those PCs unprotected. The other option is you're a responsible human being and you say, I don't want to use a fully unprotected system that can still access the internet, so I'm going to replace my computer. And that's also absolutely horrendous because your computer works. It still works. It still runs the OS that you were running. It is artificially obsolete. So you're going to ditch it, throw it in a landfill. If you're responsible, find a recycler or maybe donate it to someone who knows what to do with it. But you're going to buy a new one. That just creates e-waste and you're also spending money that you didn't really need to spend and you're running Windows 11 on that new device, which is, as we've seen, a pretty bad operating system in a lot of ways. So those two options really, really suck. You either move to Windows 11 and you're using a bad system that is spyware and most people will not know how to make it less spyware-y, less prone to crashing and less problematic, or you're just sticking to a completely unprotected operating system, which is the worst possible option, or you're buying a new PC when you didn't have to, and you're using a terrible OS as well. So all of these outcomes really just suck for the users involved and for the entire internet and privacy and everything as a whole. It's just bad. But let's be clear, Windows 10 going end of life is not the problem. Linux distros go end of life all the time. Only LTS distros generally last for more than 10 years. Everything else is generally a year, two, three at most. We tend to obsolete our Linux distros and kernels more often than Windows gets obsoleted. But the problem is you don't really have good options when moving from Windows, whether if you're moving from one Linux distro to another or to its new version, it's free, you don't need to upgrade your hardware, you don't have to do anything, you don't have restrictions, and it's not privacy invasive either. The problem is not the end of life, it's how it is being handled by Microsoft. And that's where I'll do the small Linux plug. Of course, if you're watching this channel, you're probably already using Linux or at least interested in trying it out. Or maybe you tried it, but it wasn't ready for you right now, but you're still interested. This is the perfect time to move to Linux. Don't stick to an insecure Windows 10 device if you still plan to connect to the internet. This is a horrendous idea. You're going to get infected yourself and you're going to infect other people that you interact with. Do not do it. You also should not move to Windows 11. It is not a good operating system for your privacy, for commercial practices, and using it encourages Microsoft to keep doing that crap. That's the main thing. If you buy into Windows 11, even if it was free for the upgrade, you're basically telling Microsoft, hey, look, the Windows 11 market share is growing. So that planned obsolescence is working. We can do the same with Windows 11 and Windows 12. Add some arbitrary, absolutely unneeded hardware requirements. The TPM2 chip is not a necessary thing. It is for secure boot and a biometric authentication, both things that are highly dispensable for a bunch of use cases. Windows will keep doing that shit if you move to Windows 11 because you're basically telling Microsoft our strategy works. Even if it was free for you, it is not free for the rest of the world because you're encouraging a bad company to keep doing bad things. You probably should try and move to Linux instead. I know I said I wouldn't tell people to do that, but you really should try it out. It is free. You can try any distribution on a live USB to see if your hardware is well supported. Just plug in your peripherals and see if stuff works properly. If it does, you can install it while keeping Windows alongside it so you're not really taking many chances. If it doesn't work for you in the long run, it will always be time to move to Windows 11 if you really, really need to. But Linux runs most single player games and a bunch of multiplayer games. Some do not run, let's be honest. It has really competent Office suites. Only Office, LibreOffice, WPS Office if you really want to use that stuff. You have plenty of options that are really compatible. You can still access any website you want. We have all the browsers. We have plenty of open source apps that will let you do everything you want. And if you really, really need a Windows app, you can run Windows in a VM and run the app this way. GPU pass-through also exists, not super easy, but if your application don't absolutely require a GPU, 
then there's no problem here. And if it just requires a little bit of graphical acceleration, it will work as well. Do not move to Windows 11 unless you're absolutely certain you need to do so. Now, there are plenty of resources on how to move to Linux on this channel, but there are plenty of other channels and articles covering that as well. It is not an easy process by any means, but it will be better in the long run than moving to Windows 11. So that's why Windows 10 going end of life is such a bad thing. It's not the end of life. It's the, all the consequences and all the bad options this gives people. It will just result in a worse internet, in a worse computer ecosystem, in worse ecological outcomes. It's just bad. It's been really badly handled just for the sake of selling people more PCs. And I think it needs to be called out. And that's the place where I would usually plug in my usual sponsor, Tuxedo Computers, but after telling you to not buy a new computer, I'm not going to plug a sponsor that sells Linux computers. Uh, the link is still in the description, but yeah, that, that's a horrible segue. Anyway, this will conclude today's episode. You know what to do uh, with all the YouTube buttons and whatever. Uh, we can talk about all of this in the comments as always, in a civil fashion, as much as possible. And you have plenty of links to support the channel down in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!